Some of my most popular tutorial videos thus far have revolved around a Mac OS X application by the name of Soundflower. For those unfamiliar with this application, it essentially allows one to record their system audio. When Soundflower is paired with multi-device output and aggregate device input features built into OS X, it serves as an excellent tool for those interested in doing voiceovers as well as commentary. The tool enables individuals to capture system audio, their microphone input, and at the same time it also allows for hearing of output via headphones. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate how to achieve the same results in Windows using a donationware tool known as VoiceMeter. By donationware, we mean that the developers of this tool leave it to you to support them. So if you like this tutorial and the program, please consider sending some money to their way. I must warn you, VoiceMeter is slightly complicated initially, but hopefully I can simplify the process leading to the desired results. The first thing that we need to do is, of course, download the application. I've included a link in the description leading to the site where VoiceMeter can be downloaded. Feel free to also install the application and reboot your system before continuing on with this tutorial. When you finish installing VoiceMeter, it will add virtual audio drivers to your operating system. I recommend you reboot your system so that the drivers are configured properly. These drivers are essential for audio rerouting. The first thing that we're going to do is launch the VoiceMeter application. At this initial stage, you will notice that VoiceMeter is not picking up the system audio. This can be seen by a lack of audio signal in the virtual input column of the application. To fix this, go to the Sound Devices panel and set the default playback device from speakers to voice meter input. This in turn will reroute all the system audio to voice meter. This is necessary in order to capture the system audio. If properly configured, a fluctuation in the bars indicating the presence of a sound signal should be seen in the virtual input column of the voice meter application whenever anything on the system is playing in audio. To demonstrate, I will now play a YouTube video. And as you can see from the virtual input section of the voice meter application, it is now capturing the system audio. As soon as I pause the video, the bars indicating the presence of an audio source disappear. After making sure that VoiceMeter receives system audio, the next step is to configure settings in the application itself to make sure that the application receives microphone input. Furthermore, we also need to make sure that VoiceMeter is set up to output audio to our headphones while simultaneously sending audio to the VoiceMeter output virtual device, or we won't be able to hear the system audio at the time of recording, which can be problematic. In the application itself, we need to make sure that the primary hardware input is set to your microphone. In my case, this is the blue microphone. The A and B in voice meter represents where we want our audio signal to go to. Activating A will send the signal to our headphones or speakers, while activating B will send signal to the virtual audio device. If you enable A for the microphone, that will mean that your input from the microphone will be sent out to your speakers. In other words, you will be able to hear yourself speak. In my opinion, that's distracting as heck, so I left the A output channel disabled for the microphone. We do, however, want our microphone input to be sent to the virtual audio device. For this reason, output channel B is activated. Next, let's quickly discuss the virtual input column. Virtual input refers to voice meter's ability to access the system audio in our case. We want the system audio to be pushed to both our headphones as well as to the voice meter virtual output device. For this reason, both A and B output channels are enabled for this column. At the moment, you can see that when the video is playing on YouTube, both A and B output channels are obtaining the audio signal. If I disable A, from the virtual input column, the audio signal will be terminated on that channel. In turn, we won't be able to hear the audio in our speakers. 
At this point, I want to take the time to discuss the hardware out section in voice meter. In the hardware out column, there are two options titled A1 and A2. A1 and A2 refer to two physical devices which you can define and audio signal will be sent to these devices. In my case, I only have one physical device which I want to send auditory output to, my speakers. So for A1, I specified speakers or high definition audio device. This physical device may differ for you. To test that everything is configured properly, I'm going to use an open source software named Audacity. Set the recording settings to the following. Windows Direct Sound in the first option, Voice Meter Input as the default sound playback device, and Voice Meter Output as the recording device. We set Voice Meter Output as the recording device as the Voice Meter application will be sending out the combined system audio plus the microphone audio signals to this device. By setting it as a recording device, we will therefore pick up both the microphone and the system sounds. As you can see from the video on the screen, Audacity is picking up both my system audio as well as the mic input. At this point in time, I am also able to hear the system audio through my headphones. I can't hear the microphone input, however, since in the voice meter application, we said that we only want the mic input to go to the virtual output device. Therefore, while Audacity picks up both signals, I can only hear the system audio through my headset. And that's all there is to configuring voice meter. To go over things really quickly, first, make sure that your hardware input is set to your microphone. Secondly, make sure that the virtual input is receiving system audio. Thirdly, Specify the hardware output to your headphones or your speakers. I recommend you use headphones since otherwise there might be interference issues. Also, when you record using voice meter with any application such as a screen recorder, ensure that you're using voice meter output as your input source. After I give you an opportunity to read these written instructions, I will move on to the demonstration section. So here we have a recording from my camera. As you can see, the blue microphone is set as the hardware input and output B, the virtual input, is the only one enabled for Hello. the microphone. This means that at the time of recording, I won't be able to hear myself speak. Voice meter also allows you to have a second independent physical device feeding input in, but I don't have any, so the secondary hardware input column is blank for me. The virtual input section has both A and B output channels enabled. We want the system audio to go to both our speakers as well as the virtual device which is capturing our mic input. Make sure that voice meter can capture the system audio by going to the audio devices panel and selecting the voice meter input as a default playback device. I just want to make a note at this time that if you close the voice meter application and the voice meter input is set as a default playback device, no sound will come out of your speakers or from your headphones. This is because the voice meter application is responsible for taking the sound that is inputted into the voice meter input device and then rerouting that sound to the speakers as well as the voice meter output device. Without the application running, this rerouting will not occur. In short, if you close the voice meter application, revert back to using your speakers as a default playback device. As you can see, the voice meter input is receiving the system audio. At the same time, you are able to hear this audio coming out from my speakers. The rerouting is set up properly. Once all the screws holding the backplate in place have been removed, the backplate can be easily detached by applying a little bit of upwards pressure. At this point in time, all I need to do is to use a recording software 
and specify the voice meter output device as a source for sound input. This will basically tell the program, hey, I want you to use the virtual device set up by voice meter, which contains my mic input and my system audio as the source for audio for this recording. Test. 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 I hope this tutorial helped you out in configuring voice meter and if you like the content please feel free to leave feedback. Thanks for all your support.